Good morning. Today I'm going to read from Galatians chapter 1 and we're going to talk a bit about this present evil world, the will of God for us, who we are in Jesus Christ and what we can expect in the time to come. I've touched on that yesterday, but here we go. It reads in Galatians chapter 1, Paul, an apostle, sent not of men nor by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead and all the brothers and sisters with me. So Paul is clearly saying here that he is not sent of a man and neither does he come with the power of just a normal man. He is sent by Jesus Christ, the man Jesus Christ, that lives forever which is the fullness of God bodily, and he is sent by the Father, the one who raised Jesus from the dead. So what he's basically saying is that the authority that I speak with is with that that is above the things of this world. That's above death itself. I'm sent by the one that raises the dead and the one that was raised from the dead. So what he's basically saying is is he's bringing a watertight argument to the table. He lays a very strong foundation. He's saying the one that raised Christ from the dead plus the one that's raised from the dead, uh, confirming that Jesus is alive, has sent me. And I am and, and I'm here with my brothers and sisters with me that believes in the very same thing. And then he now tells the people what God's message is for them. And this is the message that I've been carrying in my heart for many years and I want to bring to you again this morning. He says, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. So he says that God gives us grace grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen to this, who gave himself for our sins, and here's the reason why he gave himself for our sins, to rescue us from this present evil age according to the will of God our Father to whom, we be, uh, to whom be glory forever and ever. So what he's saying is, is God the Father lives forever. He can never die. Uh, Jesus Christ came. He gave himself for our sins. In other words, for our weaknesses, for our fleshly flesh and its inabilities to live forever so that we can be rescued from this present evil age according to the will of the one that can never die. So there's one that can never die. He's God the Father. He has got a will. The will of God the Father is to rescue all of us from this present evil age. This he does through Jesus Christ, who has come to give us the life that comes from heaven, so that we as people, although we live in this world, can have a life that is born from God. Isn't that absolutely wonderful? You can live in this world. You can live, I live in Malmesbury in the Western Cape in South Africa, and in living in Malmesbury, or even I was now in Zambia, could live in Zambia and be in, on the border of Angola there where it is completely remote and all those kind of things and have a life that is born from the one that has decided to redeem us and deliver us from this present evil age. We need to understand that the scriptures clearly say that we are not of this world. We are not of this world. Our citizenship is in heaven. Now, what does that mean? God has come and has redeemed us from having a life that is born from the corruptions of this world. There are so many corrupt things in this world. If we look at this world and just the power of man, we can see that there's no way that this world will survive forevermore. But we find a man that was raised from the dead under the power of God the Father who has redeemed Jesus from the corruption that's in this world in raising him from the dead.
And in the very same way, yes, Jesus Christ has promised us that through his rulership, he will bring everything that will bring death to us under subjection to him, giving us life. So here he says in Philippians 3.20, it says, but our citizenship is in heaven. That word citizenship there is the Greek word uh, where we, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a Greek word which talks basically about the way we live as citizens where we get the our word politic from so what it's basically saying is is our politic uh, the way we live as citizens is from heaven and from it we await our savior the lord jesus christ who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself so what he's saying is is that we are not citizens of this world. And because we are not citizens of this world, our politic, the way we relate to people, the way we relate to, to things, the way we are members of society, is not as if we are members of a decaying society. We are part of an eternal society. The one that has been a part of a society that has been put on display in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus walked and acted the way he did because he was from the eternal. And the very same way with us who believe upon him, our lives, the way we conduct ourselves, is not from the platform where we are thinking, well, some, everything is just going to give way tomorrow. No, we are part of the eternal. And we have seen how that shows forth in the resurrected Jesus Christ. So I want to just read the following scripture to you, 1 John 5, 19. We know that we are from God and the world lies in the power of the evil one. It says this world and its systems is under the power of the evil one which does not have eternal uh, existence. But we are from God. So we act as people who know we have eternal life. We don't live in the fears of what's going to happen next. We don't live from the things of this world. It says here in 1 John 2.17 And the world is passing away along with its desires but whosoever does the will of god abides forever i want to tell you the world is passing away but you you abiding forever what is the will of god the will of god is that you believe upon him whom he has sent which is jesus christ which will bring forth the will of god in you which is what which is to redeem you from this present decaying world and give you eternal life <clears throat> isn't that beautiful it says Philippians 3.20, But our citizenship is in heaven from where we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. But our actions, this is, this is how we can say citizenship here, our politics, the way we live as polite people according to what is true and real, is in heaven. In other words, what determines our lives is in heaven, which is the Son of the living God. So I've got good news for you. We don't have to wait to see what any prophet's going to say about 2022. We don't have to see what's the newest thing they're going to say about the COVID virus. Although when we look at certain things and we see, well, that sounds like good news, where uh, they, they would say, well, this thing, is, this thing is maybe over or whatever, we will rejoice in that. Uh, but we don't need that for our joy. We don't need a president to, uh, to, con to, to, to declare our future for us. Our future has been declared. We know who we are in Christ. We believe in him. We are under the rulership of God. We are under the power of the Almighty. We are citizens of heaven, and that is why we can act and live the way we do. <clears throat> I want to read a scripture from Titus 2, verses 11. It says the following. It says, For the grace of God that brings salvation. In other words, the grace of God that saves us from this decaying world, just as, I, as what I've explained, has appeared to all men. And it teaches us 
that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. So what he is saying is, is the moment we deny uh, ungodliness and worldly lust, what that means, it doesn't mean that when we stop to do ungodly things, when we deny ungodliness is when we say that we are not the ungodly. We are not under the rulership of the world because we are now citizens of heaven. For we are under the rulership of him that subdues all things through the power of his will. And we are under the power of the almighty God, the Father who raised Jesus from the dead. And we are under the rulership of the one that is raised from the dead. And our life is from him. That is what grace teaches us. We can put it this way, and I end off with this. The power of the resurrection that brings salvation has appeared to both Jew and Gentile. And what we know now is that we can deny the ungodly thing, which is death itself, and the desires that comes from death itself. And we can live soberly. Do you know that if you don't live in the knowledge of what Jesus Christ has done, you're not sober? That's not sober thinking. That's not sober living. That is unrighteous living. So as we see that our sins has been taken out of the way, death has been taken out of the way, we are now part of the kingdom of life. That is sober thinking. So let us think soberly as we continue in this day. Know that you are deeply loved by God and that he will never leave you nor forsake you. He is your father. You are under the rulership of the almighty God. You have got, you've got God as your father. Your reward is God himself. Your reward is the very life of the almighty God. Fear is not your portion. Life is your portion. Glory to God. Let us enjoy what has been freely given to us in Christ. God bless.